Okay, hello and welcome to this Garrett.com training presentation on rapid spanning tree protocol configuration verifications with demo. Okay, so uh, in previous videos we set up spanning tree protocol and what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you the performance of spanning tree protocol then I'm going to kill the configuration on the switches, uh, run through with you the configuration of rapid spanning tree protocol and then compare and contrast the two results and see how, how much faster rapid spanning tree is compared to standard old-fashioned spanning tree protocol. Okay, so uh, bear with me one second and I'll get these switches set up. Okay, so we've got our three, uh, our three switches on the desk. What we're going to do is use the console connector to connect to the first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wipe the configuration, uh, install spanning tree protocol. If you need to uh, understand how to do that, there's just videos, uh, there's a couple of videos on how to set up standard spanning tree protocol. Please have a look at those. Um, I'm going to get these guys set up, show you the performance, and I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so while the video was paused, I went ahead and set up the spanning tree on all three switches, and I also cabled the three switches together. So we have switch one cabled to switch two via this cable, switch two cabled to switch three via this cable, and then we have a third cable linking the, the final, the first switch and the last switch back together. So we have one, two, three, and then back to number one again. So one, two, three, and back in a ring. It's uh, so we've got redundant links, and what we're going to do is we're going to break uh, the active link, and we're going to see the recovery time. So if I get the uh, get that set up, once again, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so we're actually in the uh, command line of switch one, and we can see from the list here that uh, port one is is forwarding, it's been working. And port number seven, which connects to switch two, is the blocking port. So this one is being used to talk to the third switch, and this port here, number seven, this is port seven here, goes to the second switch. This is blocking. It's there for emergencies in case the the main path goes down. So what we're going to do is we're going to take down this main path here, and this is the link which will come up. So if I get our ping fired up. Okay, so just to recap, we are in a situation here where we have port 1 forwarding and port 7 blocking. Port 5 is now forwarding because we connected our PC to this port here. So what we're going to do is we're going to ping uh, this third switch via the first switch. So the first switch is going to go, uh, the ping is going to hit the switch, come down this cable to the end here, and ping fine. Then we're going to disconnect this cable then the switches will have to recompute their topology and eventually bring this backup cable back into use and then the switches will be able to ping each other again and the ping will then recover. So let's let's see this in action. Uh, if I minimize this, bring up my command prompt, ping, ready to go, and off we go. We're pinging away nicely, reply, reply, reply. I'm going to go to the uh, network, unplug this cable here, it's disconnected. Go back to the command prompt. Look, timed out. If we go to the switch port, we can see if we rerun that command, it's now listening. That first port is disconnected. It's now going through the states. The processes of listening for MAC addresses, learning the new MAC addresses, and finally it will go to a forwarding state. And when it does, the, uh, the pings will start to recover. I'm just going to show you that there, and it's finally gone to forwarding here, and we can see that the ping's recovered. So what I'm going to do is kind of cancel that, and I'm just going to do a print screen of that uh, result, uh, and we're going to save that for later, and we can compare it to the time it takes for a rapid spanning tree to recover. Okay. Okay, so we've got that uh, print screen saved for later. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to walk you through the configuration of Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol and uh, compare the uh, speed at which that recovers to standard spanning tree. Okay. Okay, so we're back at the command prompt of the first switch. And what we're going to do first is just go to um, STP. I'm just typing STP disable to turn it off. And uh, we haven't got the redundant link connected uh, from the previous demo, so that should be fine and exit that. And then we're just going to go to set stp type equals rstp. Now this command is not actually necessary if you're configuring rstp from a blank switch because the default uh, spanning tree type is the newer version 
uh, it's got a whole bunch of new features, it's much faster to recover so the switches are set up as default to run rapid spanning tree but as we were doing a demo of spanning tree, uh, standard spanning tree and we change the type uh, we need to change it back to the to the rapid spanning tree version and it's good anyway for you to see the command on how to do that here so we enter that command it's now changed to rapid spanning tree and if we type in rstp now instead of stp and just go rstp enable and that's it piece of cake right nice and simple and we're going to do the same steps on the uh, other two switches i don't think you need to see that you're just wasting your time and uh, I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, so I completed the same commands on the other two switches, so now all of the three switches have RSTP enabled. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reconnect that redundant link now because it's now safe to do so. Uh, and pop that back in there. Now we have our redundancy back in place. And what I want to do is first walk you through some of the commands you have in here. So you've got uh, some more commands available to you, primarily because uh, the compatibility command, uh, commands with the previous versions of spanning tree. Now, it's important to note that this is not rapid spanning tree, as you would see in the Cisco world. Uh, this is the latest version, the latest industry standard version of rapid spanning tree protocol, which is called uh, STP. Uh, forgive me, 802.1D 2004, 802.1D 2004, 802.1D 2004, which I like to think as as advanced rapid spanning tree protocol, because what it is is it's the latest industry standard version which incorporates all of the improvements of rapid spanning tree protocol. It also let's tell you, so it's uh, SDP, and it also has uh, compatibility with MST, which is another version of Spanning Tree Protocol, and it also has to be compatible with the legacy Spanning Tree Protocol as well. And not only that is, if you have um, a Spanning Tree network, STP will typically recover in somewhere between 30 to 50 seconds. If you have a rapid Spanning Tree Protocol, as you have on Cisco, you would get between 1 to 5 seconds. And finally, if you have Rapid Spanning Tree 2004, which is the latest industry standard, you get a recovery of around 50 milliseconds. So many, many times faster. And the idea is that it recovers so quickly that you barely even notice there was a problem. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare and contrast the recovery times of STP compared to RSTP. And um, what I'm also going to do is just briefly cover these. Um, a lot of these commands are similar to the ones we saw in the Spanning Tree Protocol video, but as I said, a lot of them will allow you to use the, the old-fashioned style of Spanning Tree message rather than the new version. And one of the reasons why Rapid Spanning Tree is faster than Standard Spanning Tree is they made a few changes behind the scenes to make it more efficient and to make the whole process a bit more intelligent. So the switches talk to each other, they're more proactive, they can find and fix uh, network problems quicker. Um, this pretty much covers as a general uh, as a general statement that covers what these commands do in the advanced videos I'll talk about each particular command in uh, in turn but for now I want to try and keep it as simple as I can if I back out but those are the commands you have available to you here if I back out of RSTP mode and I type in show RSTP config we can see the same details we saw from Spanning Tree Protocol, who's, what your bridge name is, what your switch name is, and, and who is the root bridge, and also show RSTP ports, shows you who's doing what. So let's get a, um, a demo on a go, and let's see uh, see what we can do here. So um, we can see this one's the root bridge, and let's see if we can't track down who is... Uh, who is blocking and who is forwarding. I'm actually connected to uh, the third switch and uh, I still suspect that this will uh, be the blocking port. However, in RSTP, we don't call it a blocking. They actually changed the terminology to call it discarding. It's a discarding port. It doesn't block, it discards. Okay, so it's a bit of a, a change in the... Uh, I've actually connected... The prompt says the same, but it's actually to the first switch 
rather than the third switch. So show um, RSTP ports. And here we can see that uh, port number seven is now discarding, whereas with span entry it was blocking. So that's still the, uh, this link here is still the backup link. But what we're going to do is we're doing the same process we did before. Uh, use this switch to ping this switch via the computer. It's going to go over this link first. We'll take down that link and the backup will come up and we'll see how fast that happens. So let's go to the command prompt. Uh, hopefully we should still be there. If I just go up, start the ping, we're pinging away. And if I go to uh, kill this connection, connection's down, go back to the ping. Did you see? Not even a single dropped packet. That's how fast it recovers. If we compare that to the previous version of Spanish Tree, look, we had request timeout, request timeout, request timeout, request timeout, host unreachable, host unreachable, all these packets are being dropped and then finally it recovers. If we compare that now to this version, the newest version, we start it, we start it, we kill the connection and we don't even notice. That's how much faster it is to recover. And let's let's put that connection back, so I'm going to take it here and I'm going to I've broken it, so I've done the break, and now I'm going to do the make to reconnect it and go back to the pings to see if we have any drops. No, still no drops. Not a single drop packet. Fantastic. So when we say rapid span tree, it's the same as span tree, just so much faster. Uh, there's a whole load of uh, behind the scenes changes, which are actually quite uh, complicated, and we do have a training course to cover those. Uh, but for this video, I wanted to demonstrate uh, the effect of rapid span tree protocol and also um, um, show you how the commands to set them up on the switches. So I hope this video has been interesting. I hope it's been helpful. And on behalf of Garrettcom, I'd like to thank you for your time. Goodbye.